now then, welcome back to Agrarian Skies 2. I'm still in my turd suit. How you doing? <laughs> what are you wearing today? No, 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 don't, don't answer that. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I was only joking. Uh, crops. I've got this sugarcane cr seeds. Sugarcane seeds. I was trying to figure out how to use them. Uh, they're ex nihilo sugarcane seeds. I can't put them onto crops because they're not agricraft crop seeds. So I expected that I'd just put them on sand. Like the good old days. You just put sugar cane on sand, don't you? No? Am I mistaken? Do I put it on dirt? Do I have to put it on dirt? I don't know. Let's go and have a look. I presume you've got to put it by water. Let's take this one out. I presume you've got to put them by water, at least. So uh, have some of that, you. And have that. And do I plant? Yes. Awesome. So sugarcane can't be planted on sand. Fair enough. So now I've got normal vanilla Minecraft sugarcane growing thanks to Exnahelio. I don't know if that's meant to happen because, well, I guess I could make a normal sugarcane farm instead of needing an agricraft sugarcane farm. But I can also get my potatoes for the day. Uh, I can also uh, break this. Oh, where's it gone? There we go. I can also turn this into sugar, but I can't turn it into seeds to start growing the seeds properly with the agricraft crops and stuff. Never mind though, eh? Never mind. Uh, I want to get into this today. I want to I wanna get the processing done today and get some decent crops growing today and set up a little farm area today. Just the basics today at least. Uh, but there's something else that I'm dealing with first, other than eating all of my monster jerky really, really quickly, because I've been running around so much. Um, I set up the auto sieve and the stone generator in its own little area. Uh, this chunk here is going to be all creation, all generation, uh, resources generation. And I put some smooth stone in there, because smooth stone can get you auberry bushes. So it's, uh, it's done me good and got me some auberry bushes there, which is pretty cool. I like. I'll go and sort those out later. Uh, I also got a diamond. Dust can potentially give you diamonds, which is pretty dang good. Because there is a fortune upgrade for this sieve. That, that didn't actually give me anything for that dust. So the sieving, I've noticed, like I've put a stack in there or something, and I've noticed that I can get more from here than the sieve can get from there out of the stack. Uh, I've been doing a bit of pieces, but the diamond upgrade is something I'm interested in straight away. The other the other bushes I will plant and sort out in a little while in a dark place. I've got one downstairs already by the wall of shame. Uh, so, what was the upgrade? Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. I want uh, an, an upgrade. Not an upgrade. There we go. Uh, I want one of these fortune upgrades, which is four invar, four electrum nuggets and a diamond so now i've got the diamond that's halfway there see i've got four invar and i should be able to make myself an electric nugget 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 yes so there we go for that so this was here where is it there shift click there we go so i get two fortune upgrades so now i'm going to put the fortune upgrades in here and see how much more power it uses let's have a look it's consuming 10 as a base unit Put a fortune upgrade in there. It's now using 16. Put another fortune upgrade in there. It's using 22. There are also speed upgrades that I can uh, put in as well. Uh, the speed upgrades cost me uh, pryothe pryothium dust, uh, electrum ingots, and invar. So it cost me a fair bit to get that. So I'm not doing that this time. That cost me a diamond, yeah. But at least with the fortune, I can start doing things like getting basic gravel and sand and increasing the amount of chance I get of uh, having some good stuff coming out of it. Uh, come on, that sand just went through and I've got two fortune upgrades. Nothing came out. I can see it's still being problematic, but so long as I can work out a way of getting the free, the resources for free, then it doesn't matter if I don't get anything from the sieving process because i got the resources for free anyway. And if it's running all the time that I'm here in the map... Ah, uh, crushed gold. That's not so bad. If it's running all the time, then I may get some good stuff. Uh, I've already run a couple of stacks and got a few bits and pieces. I've just started... Uh, well, I've just set this little thing up. A redstone clock from Extra Utilities. 
with a hopper leading into a chest and I've just done all my iron supplies that I had spare. All my iron got sorted out. I've also done the tin and the copper because that's something I want to get sorted out today. I've got tin, copper, uh, tin and copper and I've also got nickel. Um, but there's something interesting that I need to make out of this and uh, it's my pulverizer. Yeah, it's a pulverizer. It's maybe not that interesting, but it's interesting enough for me. I need to pop this gear cast in and cast a gear. And I'm not sure exactly how that works out. Looks to me like it might need a little bit um, of molten. I think it's like 244 per ingot or something like that, or 144 per ingot. So that's a like three ingots to make a gear, maybe four ingots. That's what I want to find out anyway. So I'm going to smell down all my copper. Going to get that started. I just happen to have nine as well. That's not bad. And I want to swap over these ingot casts for a gear cast. I, I believe the gear cast, you can actually make a gear. Let me let me just see. To make a gear cast, you need uh, a, a gear to cast first off. And I think you can just, yeah. You can make a wooden gear like that without any problems and then you put that on your casting table and you can pour aluminium uh brass aluminium brass yeah aluminium brass over it to get the cast made and then the wooden um gear would disappear but then at least you've got the cast so i was going to do that but then that quest the last episode gave us what we needed so i got copper all right so i've got 18 ingots of copper and i'm going to need two gears for this one I'm only going to do one pulverizer at a time because resources are tight. There we go. Okay. So how many did I have left over? 14. What did I say? 14 down. Did that cost me two ingots? Did that just cost me two ingots to make a cast? 14 down to 10. It cost me four. Okay. Well, that makes sense because it, it's supposed to cost four, isn't it? That's, that's okay. That's acceptable. All right, so it's going to cost me four a time. So those ten I'm going to swap around and put into here to add to my ingot collection. Because I can always recast these, but I can't necessarily... Um, I can't necessarily worry about it too much because I'm going to have loads more income. I'm trying to get to the point where I don't have to worry about the resources at all. That I've always got a chest full of resources on hand. And the only way to do that is to automate with pulverizers and things. So we've got those two, we've got that, got that. Uh, I need a tin gear next for this. Tin gear, yes. So I've got to do the same thing again, but with tin. So a couple more ingots of copper, and then we will smelt this tin up. Uh, if I need one tin gear, I only actually need to do four. So I'll just put the first four in there, and save the rest for later, and take this off for now. There we go. Awesome. So that'll take a little bit. It's actually running out of lava. Is this lava yet ready? Yes, it is. Good, good. I've been trying to keep that up and topped up. Uh, I'm going to do something with this today as well, hopefully. Get a bit more of a lava supply, but I do need to find a tank of some kind. Uh, these tanks wouldn't be too bad. Four buckets of lava per tank. That wouldn't be too bad, would it? I suppose I could live with that. Let's get this out. Swap it over again. Ingot cast down and give me a tin gear. Uh, yeah, I've got to look for tanks to find out where I'm going to store lava en masse. And then make lava en masse for some cool things that we've got planned. Alright, so let's check this out, baby. So it was iron. I need the iron that I made earlier. There we go. Okay, tin glass 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 and iron 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 okay my first machine frame awesome uh, piston that that those two either side that on there give me a pulverizer okay so next up the pulverizer i'm going to put the pulverizer because i've got no real easy way to transfer power right now but i can transfer items okay i'm going to put the pulverizer on top the pulverizer should start charging up power. It needs a bit of fuel. Okay, I can do that. I can get some coal or charcoal. Let's see what I've got. Let's get some charcoal. Yeah, let's get it building up again. Make sure that it receives power first of all. 
from this generator, which it should do because it's RF compatible and all that. This is filling up as well. This is not filling up at all yet. Maybe it's going to take all that first and then to this. I don't know if it powers up. This is a little thing. So once this is powered up off this first bit of charcoal, I will check the next one. What did we get from here? Coal. Some iron, tin, nickel, aluminium, crushed, crushed, crushed. And stuff went all over the floor because of the silly inventory thing that we've got restrictions on. Uh, I'm going to quickly get that all charged up and in the right place and put an item transfer node on it. Uh, like I did with the cobble gen. I'm actually going to make a couple because I think I'm going to put my cobble gen onto it as well. So I'll be back. Well, 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 well. Pulverizers do not accept power from stone generators, it seems. I had this pulverizer on the top, on the sides, on the front, on the back. Uh, pulverizer doesn't need these configuration slots to accept power, just to accept items. And it wasn't accepting power from the stone generator in any way, shape or form. So I went and built this automatic hammer. And the automatic hammer does just the same as the automatic sieve does. So the... Uh, Currently, all I've done is I've just put a little bit of uh, stone in there, cobblestone in there, and let it automatically just pass it on, do the gravelly thing and sieve the gravel to give me all this kind of stuff constantly. Uh, but the only thing that I need to set different is the coal to go into the generator. So when it breaks down and gets coal from the gravel, it will go into the generator. Um, a future plan is to use a bit more lava power, but this is it for now. And the pulverizer, unfortunately, would not work at all. So I looked at the cost of the two between pulverizer and automatic hammer, and I thought the pulverizer was cheaper. But it turns out the cheaper one does not actually work. So you get what you pay for. So I will be changing that around a bit. Um, also, I've taken my cobble gen from here because I've got a full stack... Uh, well, a full barrel of cobble there for using whenever I want. And I can just grab that cobble and put it in here when in the, any time that I need it. However, I want to kind of set it up to be automatically set. So, I'm going to do something like this. And hopefully this will do exactly what I expect it to. Um, I'm going to build it on the surface for now. In kind of an experimental area. Uh, but this whole chunk is going to be designed properly at a later date. This is kind of experimental, get used to where it works, try and figure out a design, and then implement the design on a large permanent basis. So, let's see. We've got a crucible. Yeah, I've got that. I've got these bits and pieces here as well. I actually need some cobble now. Let's put a piece of cobble down just there. Yes, let's do a piece of cobble just there. And let's change this for the thing to make a cobble gen. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now I've got the cobble gen like that. I don't physically need to worry so much about uh, the water and the lava combining to make sad things. Because the block never gets broken in this case. Because the block doesn't get broken, then we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Uh, next up, I'm going to put a crucible over the top of the lava so that I can get more lava from the crucible there. Let's get that back. Thank you. Pop that into there. You can have some more. So this is going to get lava. Uh, it doesn't matter about the connection there because it won't actually put anything in it uh, until I put... Uh, input on the top giving it another valid inventory then it should start putting cobblestone in once i put the water in here so it should be putting cobble into the crucible and also into the automatic hammer should be putting cobble into both and if i make myself a thing like a magmatic dynamo or something i should be able to use the lava that i'm generating from the crucible in the power supply making that a little bit different as well uh, let me check over at the water source and get myself the water and do another cobble gen. I'm making so many cobble gens in this series, it's unbelievable. But that is the way you've got to do it. So that now should trigger this to start 
picking up the cobble. Yes, it's got two available inventories. This one here, it shall put it in the top, which will make that turn stuff into lava. And it'll do it fairly quickly because it's got lava underneath. The reason I'm setting this up here now is to be able to get the lava so I can start generating a ton of lava using this exact same method. And also, this is now going to keep that full, which means that this is going to keep gr making the gravel full and transferring the gravel down into the sieve, keeping the sieve full, which means I just need to empty this out from occasion. So, if I have myself a little uh, um, hopper, I'm going to use this hopper because I'm running very short on iron. Thank you very much for making me use an anvil in that recipe. And Invar, which also takes iron uh, in that recipe. Thank you very much. That's just what I wanted to see. Uh, but it's worth the value. It's, wor it's value. It's weight in gold. And by the looks of it, I should be able to pass uh, cobble into it, make it into gravel, gravel into another one, make it into sand, sand into another one, make it into dust, and have each of those running into auto sieves. So I've got a plan for a setup. I just don't know how I'm going to lay it out yet in this area. So this is still a little experimental setup to make sure I got it all working. The same as I'm going to be doing with the farms over there in a bit later on. Uh, but apart from that, this is pretty much ready. It just needs a hopper and a chest underneath. And then I'm going to go and do crops. Alrighty then. So got that set up over there with the hopper and the chest and it's all running nicely the only thing i haven't done yet is automate the coal going into the generator so i'm just gonna do it again now there we go oh look we had three diamonds up here from gravel which is not bad at all plenty of iron to replace all the iron i've just been using so i should be able to make another couple of devices fairly soon at this method so i'm just gonna let it run for a while um, use the diamonds for upgrades for it to give it some fortune upgrades again and just generally make this repeatable tileable repeatable all those kind of words that mean duplicated over and over again but the first setup will get me the materials i need uh, this one yeah lots of bits and pieces still left over i'll combine it all and keep making that better and better but now you know what it is i'm just generally going to fill that chunk with stuff like that over in this junk, the crop breeding area. Um, I'm using the term nursery on Magic Farm 3. And I've been playing around with this sort of stuff as well on Magic Farm 3. Uh, which you should see this week as well, actually. I should do some stuff this week on Magic Farm 3 for you. Uh, maybe going into a little more detail about the AgriCraft stuff. Um, but in this series, I'm going to try and avoid doing too much of it other than what's required. So in the Sky Farm quest line, I've got this seed analyzer, which we just made, and a journal. Now the journal, unfortunately for me, the journal requires a written book and quill. Uh, four seeds of any kind, four crops of any kind, easy to make, but the book and quill, I need feathers. I do have a couple of eggs, so I might be able to get a feather. Ink. Ink or floral dye or something. Something black. Honey. I'm not likely to get the honey drops. Ink maybe if I do a bit of a water area that I can get some squid in. Uh, and floral powder maybe. And the book is a pretty much definite as well. I've got the access to the cow's leather there. Uh, just need to set up an actual farming mechanism for them. Uh, let's put that there. Let's have a look. Oh look. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I can get a book and then I can put a book in this slot here to keep track of all my seed analysing. Uh, but let us take these crops here that I've grown first off and try and figure these ones out. Now, if I break this one. Okay, so this was number one. This one. This is the same, technically. Okay, fine. This one. Same. This one. Same, this one, same, this one, same. Why has that not mutated? I was expecting that to have mutated along here. Because uh, it grew... Oh, it, doesn't, it didn't combine two together. Maybe that's the settings in here. Let's have a look at these seeds, analyse them. Uh, it doesn't cost any power to analyse, but what's this? All growth one, gain one, strength one. Okay, and a brand new seed is 
all the same. Okay, so I didn't gain any mutations from these over this side, which is odd. I was expecting it to. Maybe it's just different settings. Uh, oh, well. Never mind, eh? Never mind. So let us see about doing something over here. And I'm going to use the Landstrider's little method that I saw. I don't know if Landstrider was the first person to do it, but Landstrider's the guy that I'm giving credit for. Uh, because it was his video that I saw to get me into this stage. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I was actually doing lots of research for Magic Farm 3. Um, there was a question in the comments as well about doing more with Pam's Harvest Craft and stuff in Agrarian Skies because it gives me lots of options. Well, with Magic Farm 3 having so much um, time being put into it to make a farm of awesomeness, I think that I will probably not do too much of this farming in Agrarian Skies, at least for video purposes. Uh, I'm planning on not doing that. Uh -huh. Yes, I got that potato seed. That's right. And I'm going to get this potato seed as well, this potato seed as well, this potato seed as well. Thank you. Now, are they all the same? Yes, they are all the same as well. They didn't grow at all either. Mmm, they didn't mutate. So they're all basic potato seeds. Okay, well, we'll see if we can get at least one mutation growing properly over here now. Uh, I don't need this much space, actually, but I'm going to do it this way. Let's start by trying to get... Uh, 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 I'm going to try and get a mutated wheat crop. So all of these need to grow, and then I will be able to... Um, mutate it into the center. So I'm going to have a look and see if I've got any bow meal in a minute. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Thank you, water. You've come back here. Uh, one, two, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. That didn't work quite as planned. <laughs> uh, I'm still leaving my cheetah potatoes here just in case for future. I still need them for something. Uh, let's take this one. I'm going to do the same again so that I've got two separate areas for breeding the crops up okay so and now i need to get up there that's not going to work ever is it there we go right that 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 and that okay and crops 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 and crops and now i should be able to cross breed some potato plants okay so they're all basic seeds at the minute one 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 across the board according to that thing there uh did i bring all my bone meal Yes, I've got all my bone meal. Okay, so I'll throw that away. I'm going to turn all my bones into bone meal because I'm going to need a lot of bone meal for this kind of stuff. So let's start with this one. Let's update that all the way. Let's grow it fully. I believe you've got to grow it fully before it can start germinating and spreading. And then put a cross in the middle. So now I've got four plants trying to breed into this one. This was Landstrider's method that he showed me. And I'm hoping that that's going to be very useful uh, in getting the best crops I can bred up to start off with and then I can just have fields of them ready to be harvested over and over again. I've got a little more crops here as well, that's good. So now with this one, I just go and put that there to try and get cross breed. So I just have to wait around a bit now for the cross breed to grow and Landstrider's method would require me to do this four times. Um, four times, so that I end up with four seeds in the middle, take them each time, and then get another one of the same value, each time mutating it to get four new seeds, and then take away the original seeds and put in the four new seeds and do it again four times, and then again four times, and then again four times, until I've got the best seed quality possible. So, um, oh, we've got something, we've got something growing out, what's this? This is, this is potentially the best seed quality. Let's break it and have a look and put another crop there. Let's have a look on the analyzer. This is the original stuff and this is the analyzed one of four of these seeds combined makes us a three, two, three, which is Faster growth by three times, so it's three times faster growth. Uh, strength, I'm not sure what strength is. And gain, I'm pretty sure that that's something to do with the number of crop you gain from it. So we'll we'll test that out. And we've got another one already. 
Uh, that's not weeds, is it? No, nope. so I'll take that as well. Let's put another one down. So it's not taking that long, is it? It's not taking me too long. This one's a different seed, though. Let's have a look. Ooh, a 141. Wow, that's a weird difference, isn't it? That's a big weird difference. Okay. And you are weeds, of course. My potatoes turn to weeds rather than seeds. Awesome. Uh, just what I was looking for in it, eh? Okay. Let's get the weeds out. Try again. Potatoes, try again. Have all of these grown fully? That's mature, that's mature, that's mature, and that one's mature. Yeah, they're all mature, so they should be working. What have we got on here? Weeds again on here now? I'm getting a weed bout now, aren't I? Each time you use a weed up, I'm using a crop up as well, which is a little bit on the annoying side, but still. This is something now that's going to be fairly long-winded off-camera work, because I've got to get four of each new seed, and then grow them all up again, and so on. I could potentially, uh, let's see, I could, once this grows, I could potentially move it on one. Oh, what's this? Got the potatoes. Uh, yeah, let's do the potatoes. Let's put another two crops there. Let's check how our potato seeds have improved. And we're up to 333. So that's immensely better, really, isn't it? So that's done a good job. But what I was saying was I could take this now, right? I could take this one. We. Uh, put another crop down and take the 333 seed, plant that, give that some bone meal to update it, and then when I harvest it, how many potatoes do I get? There was two potatoes off that. Uh, uh. Let's do it again. And one potato off it. Okay, maybe I'm not getting as much as I thought I was. I'm getting weeds again, though. No? Alright. So, this is a long, laborious process. A long, laborious process which has to be done in order to uh, get the crops working as best as possible. And so I'm not going to just sit here and do this for ever and ever and ever while recording. I'm going to get it done in my own time. Uh, let's get that up to full. Thank you. And that's another potato one. Let's check this one out. And what do we got? A 3 2 th 2. Okay. Well, I can break this one now. I can uh, place these crops back down here and get that in there and uh, grow. Oh, it's too dark to grow. Okay. Uh, well, that is the idea. So this one's now upgraded to a 3 3 3. This one's upgraded to a 3 2 2. This one's still a 1 1 1. This one's still a 1 1 1. Um,. I would wait for four of these and see which is the better method, I guess. Because these four, break them all, put the four fresh ones down, and get rid of old seeds is another thing. So I brought this barrel so that any old seeds, like these two old potato seeds that I've got here, I can't compost them in there. Okay. There is a composter. There is a composter. And... I don't see it right now, but I'll find it. There's a compost barrel that you can get to get rid of old seeds and things. Maybe it's been disabled. I don't know. Uh, I could always use the Pam's Harvest Craft seed soup recipe to get rid of unwanted seeds anyway. But that is good enough for now, I suppose. Let me do the, some more crops. I'm going to carry on with this, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of Agrarian Skies 2. Uh, it shouldn't be long. Another day or two. And I should have some development in these crops by then. So, see, until next time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.